Smile and learn. Today, we're going to learn about the layers of the Earth. The Earth is formed by four different layers. These are the atmosphere, the biosphere, the hydrosphere, and the geosphere. The atmosphere is the outer layer that surrounds the Earth. It is formed by gases that protect the planet from outer space dangers, like solar flares or small objects flying in space. Oxygen that is an essential element for life is found in this layer. The atmosphere is divided into five main layers. The troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the thermosphere, and the exosphere. As we reach the surface of the Earth, we find two different layers, the biosphere and the hydrosphere. The biosphere is made up of all living beings. This layer extends downward to the depths of the oceans and upward to about 10 kilometers over the sea level. Plants, animals, fungi, and bacteria live in this layer together with all human beings. The biosphere is made up of several ecosystems like the forest, the jungle, the savanna, the desert, or the tundra. The hydrosphere is made up of all of the water on the Earth's surface. This layer includes the water on the surface, underground, and in the air. Water in the hydrosphere exists in three states, solid, liquid, and gaseous. The hydrosphere covers three quarters of our planet. That's a huge amount of water, but only 6% is fresh drinking water. That's why we should save as much water as we can and use it wisely. The inner layer of the Earth is the geosphere that extends from the surface to the center of the Earth. This solid ground habitable layer is made up of rocks, minerals, sand, and other materials. The geosphere is divided into three different layers. The crust, the mantle, and the core. Temperature rises significantly as we move deeper. That is all about the layers of the Earth. Would you like to find out more? Don't miss the next video! Today in our video series about the layers of the Earth, we're going to learn about the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the outer layer that surrounds the Earth. It is formed by gases that protect the planet from outer space dangers like solar flares or small objects flying in space. Oxygen, that is an essential element for life, is found in this layer. The atmosphere also helps to control the temperature of the planet. We would find it hard to survive without the atmosphere. The difference between day and night temperatures would be huge. Depending on how high we get, the composition of the atmosphere changes, dividing itself into five main layers. The troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the thermosphere, and the exosphere. The troposphere is the layer closer to the surface of the Earth. It measures approximately 10 kilometers high. Clouds are found in the troposphere, and weather phenomena like wind, rain, or snow occur here as well. Air, that is much needed for life on the planet, is found in the troposphere. That's why we should make sure not to contaminate it. The stratosphere extends to an altitude of 10 to 50 kilometers above sea level. The ozone layer is part of the stratosphere, and it's very important because it protects our planet from harmful UV sunlight rays. The ozone layer is getting thinner and thinner as air pollution rises. Did you know that airplanes fly in the stratosphere to avoid turbulence? The mesosphere extends to an altitude of 50 to 85 kilometers above sea level. 
the mesosphere is the coldest layer of the atmosphere. Temperatures can drop down to 90 degrees Celsius, below zero. Shooting stars occur in the mesosphere. These are meteors that travel through space. As soon as they hit the mesosphere, they start burning up, leaving a tail behind them. The thermosphere extends to an altitude of 85 to 500 kilometers above sea level. This layer is the warmest of all five layers. Air temperature on the surface of the Earth is kept constant thanks to the thermosphere. In this layer, temperatures can rise to more than 2,000 degrees Celsius. The International Space Station orbits the Earth within the thermosphere. Impressive natural phenomena, like the northern and southern lights, occur in the thermosphere. The exosphere is the most distant layer from the Earth's surface. It extends to an altitude of approximately 500 to 10,000 kilometers above sea level. Air in the exosphere is very thin. There's nothing but hydrogen and helium there. This layer is our outermost limit with space and protects us from solar flares. Satellites orbit the Earth within the exosphere. Today, we're going to learn about the geosphere. The geosphere is an inner layer of the Earth, extending from its surface to the inner core of the planet. This layer is made up of solid rock and habitable ground. The thickness of the geosphere is approximately 6,730 kilometers. The geosphere is made up of rocks, minerals, magma, and sand. The closer we get to the inner core, temperature, density, and pressure progressively increase. The geosphere is made up of three concentric layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. The crust is the thinnest, outermost layer of the geosphere. The thickness of the crust varies from 5 to 30 kilometers, depending on where you are on the Earth. The crust is made up of continents and the bottoms of the oceans. The geosphere is broken up into several tectonic plates. These make up the crust and also the mantle, and they are found in a layer called the lithosphere. Tectonic plates are constantly moving, molding the crust. Their movements causes earthquakes. The second layer of the geosphere is called the mantle. It is 82% of the Earth's volume, being 2,900 kilometers thick. The temperature of the mantle is really high, ranging from 700 to 1,300 degrees Celsius. That's why it's made up of molten rock called magma. Sometimes, magma finds its way up to the surface and flows up through the void between the tectonic plates. This is when volcanoes erupt. The core is the innermost layer of the Earth, and it is 3,500 kilometers thick. The inner part of the core is made up of solid iron, where the outer part is made up of liquid iron and nickel. The temperature in the core is ultra-high, ranging from 4,400 to 6,000 degrees Celsius. The wide ranges of temperature and pressure conditions in the outer core cause the molten metal to move. This results in the formation of electric currents that produce magnetic fields. Did you know that thanks to these magnetic fields, we are able to use instruments like the compass? These are the layers of the geosphere. Did you like learning about them? Hello friends! They told me you don't know what the water cycle is. Is that true? Don't worry, I'll explain it in a jiffy. I know it by heart. I've traveled the water cycle many times. The water cycle is the process during which water circulates around the planet, through the seas, the land, and the sky. All this happens thanks to solar energy. There are three stages in the water cycle that I'll explain along my journey. Evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. You can't travel with me, but we'll be in touch through this camera, so you'll be able to see the whole process of the water cycle, all right? Hello, do you copy? Right now, I'm in the sea. This is where the journey begins. Do you see the sun in the sky? The sun is in charge of warming the water, changing it into vapor. Vapor goes up in the sky. 
This process is called evaporation. Evaporation also happens in rivers, dams, and lakes found on Earth, but to a lesser extent. Brr, it's so cold! Owing to lower temperatures, vapor cools once it goes up in the sky, and it turns into tiny droplets of water that form clouds. This process is called condensation. Droplets come together, they become bigger droplets, and fall on the ground because of gravity. This is how rainfall is produced. If it's even colder, snow or sleet are formed during the same process. We call this precipitation. This is the part I like best. Time to fall back on the ground. Whoa! Here we are again on the ground and the water cycle starts over. What a day! The water cycle is exhausting. Let's go through what we recorded. The water cycle is the route the water follows over the land surface, changing through different states. The first stage which we have looked at is evaporation. This is when water changes into vapor thanks to sun heat. Water vapor goes up to the sky to form clouds thanks to condensation. When water vapor cools, tiny droplets are formed and they come together for precipitation to happen. That's all about the water cycle. See you around, friends! Hello, friends! Today I want to take you on a very special journey to discover together new things about the Earth. Today we're going to learn what is the relief of the Earth's surface and the types of landforms that exist. To be able to see everything much better and not miss a thing, we're going to need my drone. Are you ready for this adventure? Wow! I think we're really high now. Everything looks so different from up here. I can see that our planet is blue due to the oceans and seas on its surface. I can also see large brown and green land masses that make up the scenery. From up here I can see that the surface of the Earth is shaped differently. This must be the relief of its surface. The relief of the Earth's surface refers to the elevation changes in the landscape. These elevation changes or landforms are called geographical features. Mountain. A mountain is a landmass which may also be made up of blocks of rock that rise above its surroundings. Mount Fuji is in Japan. Mountain. Mountain Range. A mountain range is a series of mountains connected together. I can see the Andes Mountain Range from up here. Mountain Range. Plains. Plains are vast areas of flat land that stretch across the Earth's surface above sea level. For example, the Serengeti Plains in Africa. Plains. Plateau. A plateau is a flat area of land high above sea level. Look, this is the Missouri Plateau in North America. Plateau. Island. An island is a tract of land surrounded by water. Look right there. It's the island of Madagascar in Africa. Island. Archipelago. An archipelago is a group of many closely scattered islands. For example, the Caribbean archipelago between North and South America. Archipelago. Peninsula. 
A peninsula is a portion of land surrounded by water on three sides. Can you name a peninsula? That's it! The Iberian Peninsula. Peninsula. Cape. A cape is a narrow part of land that extends into the water, usually the sea. The Cape of Good Hope is one of the most famous capes in the world. Cape. Gulf. A gulf is part of the sea that extends into the land enclosed by two capes. Look, that's the Gulf of Mexico. Impressive. Gulf. Beach. A beach is an area of sand or pebbles near the shore of the sea, river, or lake. I love the beaches in Los Angeles. Beach. Continents are surrounded by oceans and seas. This is the Pacific Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Let's continue our journey. River. A river is a stream of water that may flow into the sea, a lake, or another river. The Nile River is the longest in Africa. River. Lakes. A lake is a large inland area of fresh water. Let's fly to the Loch Ness Lake in Scotland. Lakes. This has been a sensational journey. We've learned that the relief of the Earth's surface is the elevation changes in the landscape, and that these elevation changes or landforms are called geographical features. Mountains, mountain ranges, capes, islands, or rivers make up the Earth's relief. I've taken thousands of pictures and discovered some of the secret marvels of the Earth. See you soon, friends! Hello, friends! Today we're going to learn what climate is. Climate and weather are closely related to one another, but they are different concepts. Do you know the difference? The weather is an atmospheric situation which occurs in a given moment and in a specific place. Look outside the window. What's the weather like now? Is it cold or hot? Is it rainy, cloudy, or windy? Very well. You're observing the weather. In contrast, the climate is the combination of atmospheric conditions that occur in a place for a prolonged period of time. For example, the predominant climate in Central American woods is the tropical climate because these are hot and humid places with heavy rainfall during summer. The factors that affect the climate are latitude, altitude, landscape, nearby seas, or sea currents. Because of these factors, the elements that make up the climate, temperature, precipitation, humidity, pressure, or winds, vary from one place to another. Did you know that there are different types of climates on Earth? There's a big variety, and every one of them has its own characteristics. We can divide them into hot, temperate, and cold climates. Let's learn more about some of them. The equatorial climate, the tropical climate, and the desert climate are hot climates. The countries near the equator have an equatorial climate. This climate is characterized by being hot and humid owing to heavy precipitation. The temperature is mild, an average of 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The tropical climate is a characteristic of the areas near the tropics. It's a hot and humid climate with heavy rainfall during summer. The desert climate is found in places like the Sahara Desert, the Arabian Desert, the southeast parts of the United States, or a large part of Australia is characterized by being very hot and dry.
precipitation is very scarce. The Mediterranean climate, the oceanic climate, and the continental climate are temperate climates. The Mediterranean climate is located along the Mediterranean coast and some parts of its interior. Temperatures are high during summer and mild in winter. Precipitation is not heavy. It hardly rains during the summer months. The oceanic climate is a characteristic of the areas near the Atlantic Ocean and Central Europe. Temperatures are mild during summer. Precipitation is heavy and occurs in all seasons. The continental climate is a characteristic of Eastern European areas. Temperatures are high in summer and very low in winter. Precipitation occurs mainly in summer. The polar climate and high mountain climate are cold climates. The polar climate is located in places like Northern Europe, North America, Russia, or the North Pole. It is characterized by being the coldest climate on Earth. Temperatures range from negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit in winter to 50 degrees Fahrenheit in summer. Precipitation is scarce. The high mountain climate is found in the highest peaks of the mountains. Temperatures are very low in winter and mild in summer. Precipitation is heavy. Over the past centuries, the climate on Earth has been changing as a consequence of global warming, meaning the increase in global temperature owing mainly to human activity. Climate change affects all countries in the world, causing a negative impact on their economy, people's lives, and all human beings. Worse consequences are predicted in the future if we don't take preventative measures urgently. Currently, there are some viable solutions at hand. Would you like to learn about them? We will tell you about them in our video about climate change. Have you ever heard of global warming? Did you know that over the past decades, sea level has risen? All these news are related to climate change. To understand better what climate change is, we should define what climate is. The climate is the combination of atmospheric conditions that occur in place for a prolonged period of time. Over the past centuries, the climate everywhere around the Earth has changed, altering the usual conditions of a place regarding precipitation and temperature. This way, water shortage, desertification, the disappearance of lakes, or even sea level rise are becoming more and more common. In addition, the number of natural disasters like droughts, floods, or huge storms has increased. All these situations are a consequence of global warming, meaning the increase in temperature happening on the planet owing mainly to human activity. But why has the planet's temperature risen? The Earth is surrounded by the atmosphere, a thin layer of gas which allows part of the solar radiation to penetrate. For that, this layer consists of gases called greenhouse effect gases, whose mission is to absorb part of the energy received and maintain the planet's temperature. One of the main greenhouse effect gases is CO2. With the Industrial Revolution, CO2 emissions started to increase owing to the use of fossil fuels like coal or petrol. Over the past years, the presence of gases like CO2 in the atmosphere increased, and for this reason, its capacity to retain solar radiation has been enhanced resulting in an increase of the average temperature of the planet. Climate change affects every country in the world, causing a negative impact on their economy, people's lives, and all living beings. Here are some facts. Over the past 150 years, the average global temperature increased almost 2 degrees Fahrenheit. Would you say it's not much? If the Earth's temperature keeps rising, thousands of animal and plant species may disappear forever. 
oceans got warmer, and for this reason, the amounts of ice have decreased, causing sea levels to rise. Did you know that between 1901 and 2010, the sea level has risen 7.5 inches? This may cause some places to disappear beneath the water's surface. Worse consequences are predicted in the future if we don't take measures urgently. Currently, there are some viable solutions at hand. Would you like to learn about them? It is necessary to turn to renewable energies to reduce CO2 emissions. Cars are responsible for 10% of CO2 emissions. Use public transport, bicycle, or walk. Reduce your plastic use. Use less plastic. Producing plastic involves high CO2 emissions in the atmosphere. Plant a tree taking into account the ecological characteristics of your area. Did you know that five trees can absorb up to one metric ton of CO2 during their life cycle? Always recycle. An interesting fact is that we would need less energy to make paper from old newspapers than if we made it using directly the wood from trees. Turn off the lights whenever they are not needed. If we save electricity, we also reduce the energy waste required to produce it. Remember, it's in your hands to look after the planet. Want to join us in our mission? Today we're going to learn what an ecosystem is, its components, and the different types of ecosystems found on Earth. Ready to learn about them? An ecosystem is the community of the living organisms and the natural resources of the environment in which they live. Ecosystems are found in different parts of the planet. They can be very big, like the Sahara Desert, or much smaller and circumscribed, like the Dead Sea. But how do we identify ecosystem coverage? The flora and fauna of each ecosystem have adapted to live according to the characteristics and resources of their surroundings. The interaction among them defines the ecosystem and its coverage. That's why there are so many types of ecosystems. Ecosystems consist of a biotope and a biocenosis. Let's see what they are. The physical characteristics of the surroundings are called a biotope. These characteristics include non-living elements like the soil, the water, the air, the wind, the light, or the temperature. The biological community that lives in those surroundings is called biocenosis. That is to say, the living beings that live in a physical area. Among the living beings that make up the communities in an ecosystem, we can find microorganisms, plants, and animals. We distinguish between two types of ecosystems, natural ecosystems and artificial ecosystems. Natural ecosystems are those areas that have developed without human intervention, Natural ecosystem diversity occurs due to different climates and resources found in every one of them. This way, the animals and plants in a natural ecosystem have developed a series of adaptations related to the environment in which they live. Polar bears, for example, are white to camouflage themselves in the North Pole environment. If those environments are destroyed, or if there's a change in the resources, the interaction among the elements of the ecosystem would be altered, and this could endanger their existence. We can classify natural ecosystems in two major types, terrestrial and marine ecosystems. Terrestrial ecosystems include deserts, jungles, woodlands, tundras, taigas, grasslands, 
or savannas. Marine ecosystems differ, depending on the type of water. That's why there are freshwater ecosystems like rivers and lakes, and saltwater ecosystems like seas and oceans. Artificial ecosystems are those areas created by humans and cannot be found in nature, like urban ecosystems, for example, agricultural ecosystems, livestock ecosystems, reservoir and dam ecosystems. As you can see, the interaction established among the living beings and the environment is very important to preserve an ecosystem. Help to look after the environment to preserve the huge diversity of natural ecosystems. Hello friends! Today we're going to discover other places where living beings live. These places are known as habitats. Did you know that? We call a habitat a place that has the necessary resources so that living beings can survive. These resources are the light, the water, the temperature, the ground, and the oxygen. Depending on what these resources are, we can find very different habitats. There are two types of natural habitats terrestrial and aquatic. Today, I'm going to travel to the terrestrial habitats. Are you coming with me? Desert. My, my, it's so hot. Look, we're in the desert. There's a lot of light here, and the temperature is very high. It rains very little in the desert, and water is scarce. For this reason, Many animals and plants have developed strategies to accumulate water. This cactus is an example. Animals like scorpions, snakes or mammals like camels, or dromedaries can live in the desert. Did you know that there are cold deserts too? Here, Everything is frozen, and temperatures are extremely cold. There are barely any plants in these habitats. However, we are able to find some animals that have adapted to be able to live in them, like the polar bear. Jungle. We continue our trip. Look how many plants there are. This habitat is the jungle. Here, there's lots of rain and temperatures are mild or warm. This favors a humid environment in which there are many living beings. Let's see which ones we can find here. Look, an orchid! And a hummingbird! This can be a panther or a jaguar. I think I'm leaving. I don't want to be his dinner. Woods. We're in the woods. Here too, there is plenty of vegetation. Mainly trees like beech trees or pine trees and shrubs or bushes like the rock rose or the arbutus. Did you know that there are many types of woodlands? Their temperature may vary from cold to warm and because of this, the vegetation and the animals we find there change. In the woods, we can find some animals like bears or eagles. Here too, it rains often. I think that this cloud means a storm is coming. Let's continue our trip! Prairie We've just arrived at a prairie. This habitat is characterized by small plants like grass and animals like foxes or rodents. The climate in the prairie is humid. Winters are cold and summers are warm. Savannah A 
Another habitat with little vegetation is the savanna. Savannas are usually dry areas where it rains very little. However, we distinguish two periods, a dry season with low temperatures and a season that rains a lot with warm temperatures. The latter one is called the humid season. Here we can find grass, herbs, non-woody plants, and some trees like baobabs. Among the animals, we find many herbivores like elephants, zebras, or giraffes. There are also carnivorous animals like lions or cheetahs. Today we have seen the terrestrial habitats, among which we find deserts, jungles, woods, prairies, and savannas. But we still have aquatic habitats left to visit. Don't miss the next video. See you soon. Hello again, friends. In the previous video, we talked about habitats. Do you remember what they are? We call a habitat a place that has the necessary resources so that living beings can survive. These resources are the light, the water, the temperature, the ground, and the oxygen. Depending on what these resources are, we can find very different habitats. There are two types of natural habitats, terrestrial and aquatic. In the previous video, we traveled over terrestrial habitats. Today, we will be visiting aquatic habitats. Are you coming with us? Rivers and Lakes Rivers and lakes are freshwater habitats. There, we can find many animals among which fish like trouts. Small plants like water lilies also grow there. Oceans and seas. Oceans and seas are saltwater habitats. There, we find a great diversity of animals, like whales, sharks, coral, or seahorses. There are also plants that grow in the sea, like seaweed. In aquatic habitats, the living beings have adapted to carry out their activities under the water. An example would be fish bronchia that allow them to breathe underwater. In these habitats, light is a very important resource too, and sometimes due to contamination, it cannot reach deep enough to the bottom of rivers, lakes, or oceans, leaving the living beings without an essential resource. Today we learned that aquatic habitats are distinguished as freshwater rivers and lakes and saltwater oceans and seas. That was all about habitats. See you soon. Hello everyone. Today I'd like to take you on a trip across the continents of the world. Come along with me. Do you know how many continents there are and what are their names? Did you know that scientists find it hard to define the number and names of the continents? They don't have a clear answer. Well. While they're making up their minds, we're going to be following this map, which shows six continents. As you can see, the surface of the Earth consists of massive land masses, separated by oceans. A continent is an expanse of land, which is geographically and culturally differentiated from other continents. There are six continents on our planet. Europe. Africa, Asia, the Americas, Oceania, and the Antarctic. These six continents are separated by five oceans. The Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Antarctic Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean. Let's have a closer look at each one of these continents. The Americas. 
Owing to its size, geographical features, and cultural characteristics, this continent is divided into North America, Central America, and South America. The Americas cover almost 30% of the Earth's total land area. The Americas. Asia. Asia is the largest and most populated continent on Earth. It is divided into North Asia, South Asia, East Asia, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, and West Asia. Asia. Africa. Africa is the third largest continent in the world, after Asia and the Americas. The word Africa comes from Latin. It means free of cold. Africa. Europe Europe is also known as the Old Continent and is bordered by the Arctic and Atlantic Ocean. Europe Oceania Oceania is made up of the island of Australia, New Guinea Islands, New Zealand, and several archipelagos like Polynesia. Oceania is surrounded by the Pacific and Indian Ocean. Oceania The Antarctic This continent has no indigenous population, but it is visited by many scientists from all over the world. 98% of its surface is covered by ice. The Antarctic We have traveled the world, as you were able to observe, the continents from largest to smallest by size are Asia, the Americas, Africa, the Antarctic, Europe, and Oceania. And the continents from largest to smallest by population are Asia, Africa, the Americas, Europe, Oceania, and the Antarctic. It has been a sensational trip. We have learned so much about the six continents of the world. Can you remember all of them? Which is this continent? Europe. How about this one? Africa. And this large continent. Asia. Which is this continent? The Americas. Would you be able to name this one? Oceania One more to go. Which continent is this one? The Antarctic Way to go! See you on our next trip. Bye bye, explorers. Hello, friends. Today I'd like to take a trip around our planet to learn about the oceans. Would you like to join me? Look at the Earth. As you can see, 71% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. Our planet is divided into vast land masses, separated by large expanses of water. These expanses of water are called oceans. Do you know how many oceans there are and what are their names? There are five oceans on Earth. The Arctic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, and the Southern Antarctic Ocean. Let's find out more about each one of them. The Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is the largest of all five oceans on Earth. It stretches from the shores of the Americas to Asia and Oceania. Ferdinand Magellan named it the Pacific Ocean because during his sea voyage, the waters were calm and peaceful. The deepest place on the planet is located here in the Pacific Ocean and is known as the Mariana Trench. Did you know that the Great Barrier Reef is also located in the Pacific Ocean? 
The Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean stretches from the Arctic Ocean to the Antarctic Ocean, bounded on the west by the Americas and on the east by Europe and Africa. Did you know that it is the second largest ocean on our planet? The first steamship to cross the Atlantic from New York to England was the SS Savannah. In 1838, The Indian Ocean The Indian Ocean is bounded on the east by Africa and the Middle East, and on the south by Asia and Australia. It is the third largest and warmest ocean on the planet. In the course of history, due to east-west commerce, the Indian Ocean became an important throughway for transport. The Arctic Ocean the Arctic Ocean is located around the North Pole and is the shallowest of all oceans. The largest part of the Arctic Ocean is covered with ice, which, owing to global warming, is slowly shrinking. Besides being the smallest ocean, it is important to life on Earth. The Southern Ocean The Southern Ocean, also known as the Antarctic Ocean, is located in the southernmost waters of our planet. It stretches from the Antarctic coast to the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Indian Ocean. The Antarctic Circle is marked on maps as one of the major circles on Earth. The water temperature in the Southern Ocean is very low, varying from negative 2 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius. Today we traveled around the world as you have seen, the oceans from the largest to the smallest are the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Southern Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean. Oceans are beautiful places and have a significant influence on our planet. Numerous species of animals and plants and many types of ecosystems can be found in the oceans. Unfortunately, Contamination and global warming threaten ocean life. That's why it is really important to look after the oceans and protect the environment. This has been a sensational trip. We have learned everything about the five oceans on our planet. Can you remember all of them? The Arctic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean. The Southern Ocean. The Indian Ocean. The Pacific Ocean. Well done, explorers. See you soon for our next trip. Hello, friends. Today we're going to learn what is the greenhouse effect. Have you ever heard of it? The greenhouse effect is a natural phenomenon which makes life possible on our planet. But why do we talk about the greenhouse effect? Do you know how it works? Now you're going to understand it better. A greenhouse is an enclosed structure made of plastic or glass, used to grow crops, flowers, or plants. The walls and the ceiling allow sunlight to come through inside the greenhouse to warm it up. This way, we manage to maintain temperature and humidity in optimum conditions for plants to grow. The same effect is produced on our planet. How interesting! The Earth is surrounded by the atmosphere, a thin gaseous layer which allows part of the solar radiation to penetrate. To do that, this layer contains gases called greenhouse effect gases, whose mission is to absorb part of the energy received and maintain the temperature of the planet. One of the main greenhouse effect gases is CO2, also known as carbon dioxide. Over the past centuries, gases like CO2 in the atmosphere became more abundant and for this reason, its capacity to retain solar radiation has increased, resulting in the rising of the planet's temperature, same as in the greenhouse. But the increase of these gases is very bad for the Earth. Why have they become more abundant in the atmosphere? 
With the Industrial Revolution, CO2 emissions started to rise owing to the use of fossil fuels like coal or oil. Nowadays, traffic in the cities, cars, or airplanes produce great amounts of CO2 emissions. Wow, look at all that smoke in the sky! Similarly, a great part of the energy we consume is generated by using fossil fuels. Every time you leave the lights on or any electronic device, you're sending more CO2 to the atmosphere. Factories are another source of CO2 emissions. To produce plastic, for example, we use fossil fuels and we need a large amount of electrical energy to do so. Did you know that the textile industry is highly pollutant? Intensive farming is also responsible for greenhouse effect gas emissions. Wildfires emit large amounts of CO2 in the atmosphere. As a consequence of the greenhouse effect and the rise in global temperature, the Earth is changing. For this reason, water shortage, desertification, the disappearing of lakes, or even sea level rise are becoming more and more common. Worse consequences are predicted in the future if we don't take measures urgently. Currently, there are some viable solutions at hand like recycling, using renewable energies, electric transportation, or reducing plastic waste. Would you like to find out more? We tell you all about them in our video, Climate Change. We're counting on you! Remember, it's in your hands to look after the planet. Want to join us in our mission? The Solar System Today we will travel to Planet Earth You are looking at the Solar System We are going to take a deeper look at Planet Earth Do you want to join us? The Earth is the only known planet to have life Hold on tight! Here we go! Now we are on Earth, a planet full of life. That is why it is so important for us to protect and take care of the environment. Hello Earthling! I am going to tell you some interesting facts about the planet where you Earthlings come from. Like the other planets, the Earth rotates around the Sun and it takes 365 days to complete a full orbit. We call this a complete revolution. Thanks to this revolution, we have different seasons throughout the year and days and nights have different lengths. At the same time, the Earth rotates around itself and it takes 24 hours to complete a full trip. This movement is called rotation. The Earth's rotation is responsible for the change between day and night and for the rising and falling of temperatures. Did you know that many years ago people thought that the Earth was flat like a pizza? Now you can see the Earth has the shape of a sphere. Approximately 70% of Earth's surface is covered in water. Did you like this quick trip around the Earth? Now it's time to collect all the information you have learned. Have a good trip! This has been my journey through the solar system, people. It was incredible. Whoa! Whoa! That is so cool. Whoa. Greetings, Earthling. I need you for a new adventure. I hope you're ready. This is a very important mission. A gigantic asteroid is heading towards your planet. And we have to save it. We have to study the rotation and translation movements of planet Earth to find out whether it will impact on Earth or pass at a distance. Would you help me? Sure, of course I would. Mission commences now. Right away? It's been ages. I missed you. There's no time to lose. I need you to tell me everything you know about the rotation and translation movements of planet Earth. 
It's your lucky day, my friend. This week we learned all about it in class and I scored a 10, top marks. Just like the rest of the planets in the solar system, planet Earth moves in two ways, rotation and translation. Can you see how the Earth is spinning around its axis? This movement is called rotation. The Earth spins around an imaginary line which passes through the poles. If you look closely, you'll notice that the axis is a little inclined, almost 24 degrees. It takes planet Earth's 24 hours to complete one rotation on its axis, which is the equivalent of one day. Rotation explains night and day. As you can see, it's daytime in the part of the Earth that faces the sun and nighttime in the dark side. Do you understand? I do. Rotation means the Earth is spinning around itself. Exactly right! Now, I'll explain translation. The movement of the Earth around the Sun is called translation. The Earth takes one whole year to go around the Sun. Before, people used to think that the orbit of the Earth around the Sun was cyclical. But they weren't right. As you can see here, the orbit is elliptical. Thanks to translation and the inclination of the rotation axis of the Earth, we have four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. The more the hemisphere is inclined towards the sun, the more directly the sunlight reaches the Earth's surface. It's warmer, and that's why it's summertime. By contrast, the other hemisphere is less inclined, so sunlight is less direct. That's why it's colder and it's wintertime. Here, we can see that it's summertime in the northern hemisphere and wintertime in the southern hemisphere. The opposite will occur in six months. Sunlight will reach the southern hemisphere in a more direct way and it will be summer, while in the northern hemisphere, it will be winter. Owing to the fact that the translation of the Earth around the Sun doesn't take exactly 365 days, but 365 days and six hours. There are leap years, which have one more day, 366 days. That's why every four years, February has one more day, day 29. Wow, how impressive. So these calculations mean that planet Earth is doomed. The asteroid will impact Earth in one minute. No. Wait, did you take into account that this is a leap year? Oopsie, hold on. The Earth is saved from the asteroid. It will pass close by without hitting it. Yay! And it's all thanks to the leap year! Whoa! Impressive, right kids? Eclipses last several hours. Whoa! What's happening? Hey, you know very well that levitating is not allowed in this school. Come back down here! This spaceship rings a bell. Greetings, Earthling. Hey, hello there. You scared the living daylights out of me. Yeah, apologies for abducting you without any notice, but there's an emergency. Is there another asteroid about to hit the Earth? No, worse. I have an exam tomorrow, and I've been told it's about eclipses. Can you explain them to me? Oh my, you did scare me. You're lucky. It was just a few days ago we learned about eclipses in class. Awesome. Tell me everything about them. Very well then, pay close attention! Sometimes, the Sun, the Earth, and the Moon align together, forming an eclipse. On Earth, we can see two types of eclipses. Solar eclipse, like this one right here, and lunar eclipse, which would occur like this. I'll tell you about it step by step. A solar eclipse is produced when the Moon comes between the Earth and the Sun, blocking part of the sunlight, or even the entire sun. This means that during daytime, the moon positions itself in front of the sun, covering it up. That's why from Earth, we see something similar to a ring of light. It's very important to know that to observe an eclipse, it's necessary to cover up your eyes using special eyewear. During a lunar eclipse, the Earth positions itself between the sun and the moon, blocking sun rays from reaching the Earth. During the eclipse, a shadow is formed and the moon becomes dark in our view, changing its color to red. This phenomenon is known as blood moon. 
And that's all about eclipses. It's very interesting, isn't it? It's incredible. Let's see. Read to me what you wrote to make sure you understood well. An eclipse happens when the Earth, Sun, and Moon align together. We can observe two different types of eclipses from the Earth. Solar eclipses occur when the Moon comes between the Sun and the Earth, forming a shadow that covers the Earth's surface. Lunar eclipses happen when the Earth comes between the Sun and the Moon, forming a shadow that covers the lunar surface, changing the color of the Moon to copper red. That's amazing! You'll pass with flying colors! I need to get going. I have a lot of studying to do. You're very welcome! We've learned so much in just one video. Did you know there are many more videos? Imagine how much you could learn. Subscribe to the Smile and Learn educational channel to learn and have fun at the same time.